Greetings, Talvar. So, today, what are we going to be talking about? The hint is in my hand. The leaks. <laughs> so, I despise leaks. Not because of the taste, I'm sure they're very healthy for you, but I genuinely am talking about the Warhammer 40k leaks that have come out with the Tau Codex. So I'm going to put down the actual leak and talk about the topic of um, the leaks that's just been revealed over the last couple of days. So I've held off on kind of doing any reviews on them because I don't, or I fundamentally don't like them because of what it does to the community and how it divides everybody. So the Tau Facebook pages are usually quite positive sometimes. They have people asking for inspiration with their lists, talking about their recent successes, tournaments, all that kind of stuff, and asking for advice. And even though sometimes it can get quite toxic, that is actually quite enjoyable to partake in, because not only are we talking about the faction that we love, we're actually helping others get the most out of their hobbying time, um, and welcome on board to a faction that we all love. Now, when leaks come out, you're not getting a full picture, you're not getting a full story. And we've seen these potato photos of the detachments and, and the data sheets, and we're missing a few, um, we don't know if that's the whole package. Then there was the big drama of the points, um, and all I can see across the board is people getting frustrated saying things like oh my god what have they done to the crisis suits what have they done to this data sheet how come there's only four detachments or the points are ridiculous how has it gone from 180 points for riptide to the supposed 245 and it's just caused a massive divide and people are being insulted and saying that oh you don't know what you're on about and you know it's absolutely trash and what the hell have Games Workshop done and uh, they've ruined my faction and how can you you know be okay with this this codex is rubbish and I've had loads of messages from people being like what's up with the Tau codex this is bad and, and it's just a cesspool of negativity so what I thought I'd do today is actually <laughs> I'll pay attention to a few things in the leaks, I'll talk about um, my initial reactions, um, and hopefully we can just remember a couple of key things here. Number one, nothing is yet in our hands. We don't have the physical codex, we don't know if there's going to be any more detachments, and we definitely are not going to be the points that has written in the codex. 100% not. This codex has probably gone to print with Games Workshop maybe six, at least six months to nine months ahead of its actual release schedule. So those points are closer to what the points were when we first kind of got our index, like 120 points for Pathfinders, 100 points for Strikes. It, it, it just, honestly guys, if you're worried about the points, please, please, please take a step back and don't panic. They will be fine, and even if there's points increases, which is natural, because we've got different tools, we've got different stratagems that are going to boost the power and efficiency of said units, so we're going to get some points increases and decreases somewhere, but don't panic about what's been shown, let's just wait until you get your pre-order box set on the 30th, okay, and then probably the codex will come out and general release like a week after or so, and then just take it with a pinch of salt for now. But let's have a look at some of the positive things, okay? So let's deep uh, dive into the detachments. So one of the detachments obviously is the Kion, and we've been playing that for many months now, uh, many, many, many months. And I think it's fair to say that as fantastic as the sustain hits one and sustain hits two ability was, having to wait for your army to really kick in on turn three, possibly turn two, with like the example of the Kion, got a bit same old, same old. So we needed a fresh way of playing. 
Now, obviously, the Kion Detachment has that same rule with a few alterations. It says, from the third battle round onwards, ranged weapons equipped by Tau Empire models from your army have the Sustain Hits 1 ability or the Sustain Hits 2 ability instead while targeting their spotted unit. So you can no longer split fire and still get the Sustain Hits 2. Because before it was just classed as guided, now it's against the spotted unit. But what I really want to look at is the... Um, Enhancements. So we still got the Kion Enhancement. We still got the Precision of the Patient Hunter. But we've got this Solid Image Projection Unit. So if you were a fan of your redeploys, then you've got that back. It's slightly different because you have to do it before you know who's going first. But what you can do is, is after both players have deployed their armies, select up to three Tower Empire units from your army and redeploy them. When doing so, you can set up those units up into strategic reserves if you wish, regardless of how many units are already in strategic reserve. So you can push past that uh, limitation of 50%. And you can actually, you imagine your deployment and you've got, okay, well, I'm gonna put um, a hammerhead, hammerhead and a riptide on this side and you're going for that heavy flank and the opponent's kind of gone, Ugh, I'm gonna deploy my stuff on the other side. And then you can just pick up those three units and go, huh, I'm actually coming over here now. So you can play a lot of shenanigans and you can win the deployment zone, sorry, the deployment war, by just doing this simple move. And all you have to do is have a Tau Empire model with this enhancement. So it doesn't have to be a commander, it could be a Cadre Fireblade, it could be an Ethereal. You can actually use this redeploy ability to either put stuff in reserve or play mind games with your opponent. And then you've got three unit devastation. So, same thing as before, you're getting the lethal hits while targeting their spotted unit. So that's a little bit about the detachment, and I think the solid, what's it called, the uh, solid image projection unit is definitely something that I'm going to be keen to try out. So I'm not going to go through everything, because I really don't want to sit here for an hour reviewing all of the leaks. Um, I think for those of you that are watching, um, there's going to be a few spoilers here, but I'm not going to go and ruin everything. I want people to actually wait until the codex comes out. And I know it's tempting to look at this. It was posted everywhere and it's kind of hard to avoid. But I'm just going to pick out a few key things that I think we should get excited for. Because again, this video is all about boosting positivity, not crying and not complaining. I am sick and tired of hearing all the complaining and the crying online and all the hatred that can come with it when people challenge um, people's attitudes. So, Wall of Mirrors. Oh my god, this is great. Wall of Mirrors, back in the day, and you could do it with Stealth and Ghost Kills. It's back, baby. Stealth, Ghost Kill, or Commander Shadow Sun. So, end of your opponent's fight phase. Remove your unit from the battlefield and place it into strategic reserves. This is so cool. you got a Ghost Kill that could be on a flank. And, I don't know, it's got a few wounds left and it's, um, you know, almost on death doors. As long as it's not in engagement range, it can just bugger off. It, see ya. And in terms of the way that the game works with scoring, with secondaries, if you know that maybe you've got a chance of pulling investigate signals or engaging all fronts is still left in your deck, then... Man, putting that into strategic reserve to be able to go and respond to what the cards are telling you to do. Because CP is going to be very important for Tau. There's lots of cool stratagems to use. So that ability for one CP to be able to pick up either the stealth unit, ghost kill, or, or commander shadow sun is so, so good. I am so excited about that. And the other one is the tempting trap is a really fancy one where you can pick an objective... Uh, you cannot use it during the first or second battle round, but one Tau Empire unit from your army that has not been selected to shoot this phase, the first time you use this stratagem, you must also select one objective marker that is not in your opponent's deployment zone. Until the end of the battle, this becomes your trap objective. And what that gives you is until the end of the phase, each time modeling your unit makes a ranged attack that targets an enemy unit within range of your trap objective marker, add one to the wound roll. So... Your strength 8, your strength 8 Ghost Keel, Ion Raker, your strength 8 Ion Accelerator suddenly gets plus 1 to wound against a vehicle. Brilliant. Against a Catan. Brilliant. 
you've got to think outside the box with this kind of stuff rather than just look at the data sheet, look at the stats, and then go, oh, it's still only strength eight. Look at what they've done within the stratagems that force you to make tactical decisions about your CP management, your positioning of your units, and the proper true Kion way, the patient hunter, setting traps. Oh, it's just so good. Um, so let's move on to the Mont Car, right? We've been asking for it, we've been waiting for it, and it is now here. And oh my god, I love what they've done with it. It says here, during the first and second and third battle round, ranged weapons equipped by Tau Empire models from your army have the lethal hits ability. And while a unit is guided, see for the greater good, FYI we don't have the greater good rule leaked so we don't know, its ranged weapons have the assault ability as well. So the second paragraph is a, well, it's a second sentence. It says, while a unit is guided, its ranged weapons have the assault ability. So that will just maintain throughout the battle. The first, second, and third just give you the lethal hits. So start to think about all those units that we've never seen on the tabletop in the index. I don't think I've seen anybody talking about missile sides. There's been a couple of you know, people that have been experimenting with them, but I certainly haven't given the love to missile sides in a long while. But with this, having a broadside unit with potentially, through other things that are in stratagems and abilities like Tetra's spotting, having a missile side unit being able to advance, shoot with full rerolls to hit and then twin linked as well, so you have full rerolls to wound, and then any sixes that you roll to hit, with a, a huge amount of shots, is going to be triggering those lethal hits. And we're not just talking about Tetras, there's even a stratagem that you can just have this unit that you're shooting at, have every Tau unit shooting at it with full rerolls to hit. It's so good. So you've got to think about units that are currently not being used. And broadsides, quite slow. Um, so now, being able to move five, advance. There's even, if you look at some of the enhancements, Strike swiftly. Tau Empire model only at the start of the battle before any moves are made using the scout's ability. You can select two friendly Empire you Tau Empire units within six of the bearer that do not have the scout's ability until the end of the battle. All models in the selected units have the scout's six ability. Brilliant. So there is a stratagem that you can auto advance. And that means that potentially you could have your broadsides moving six before the game then move five, then auto advance six, that's 17 inches in total, and shooting with lethal hits and assault. Like, come on, that's exciting to me. And it's gonna allow you to take units that maybe you've not considered or been wishing to see the light of day. And now, this detachment is gonna bring those units to life. Example of Monkar, pretty much the opposite of Kion. You get to do it in the fourth battle round. Strategic Conqueror, you can increase the OC, but I add one to those friendly models. So, for example, if you had it on a commander in a unit crisis suits, there's suddenly OC three each. Coordinated explo exploitation, basically the observer unit until the end of the phase, range weapons equipped by models in their guided unit had the sustain hits one ability while targeting their spotted unit. So. While the bearer is leading a unit, each time that unit is an observer unit, until the end of the phase, ranged weapons equipped by models in their guided unit have the sustain hits one. So, want to stack up on sustained and lethals? Yes, please. So then we look at some of the stratagems. So the one I mentioned before was pinpoint counter-offensive. One Tau Empire unit from your army that was just destroyed, excluding crew units. You can use this stratagem on that unit even though it was just destroyed. Until the end of the battle, each time a Tau Empire unit, excluding crew units from your army, makes an attack that targets the enemy unit that has just destroyed your unit, you can reroll the hit roll. So, one CP, boom, right. That brick of wardens with the bloody blade champion has just killed a piranha or something small. Yeah, full rerolls to hit on that unit now for the rest of the game. Sweet. And it's a battle tactic. Okay? battle tactic. You've got aggressive mobility that I mentioned. Just don't want to roll a d6 for your advance? Spend a CP. It's a battle tactic. Auto advance 6. You've got 
focus fire, one CP. Again, a battle tactic. And there's a reason I keep saying battle tactic, and I'll get onto it in a second. Start of your shooting phase. Two Tau Empire units from your army that have not been selected to shoot this phase, and one enemy unit. Until the end of the phase, each time a model in either of your units makes an attack, it can only target that enemy unit. And if only if it's an eligible target for that attack. And when resolving that attack, improve the armor penetration characteristic by one. And you can't use this strategy during the fourth and fifth battle rounds. Brilliant. Cool. So I'm thinking, hmm, alright, well, missile pods that are my crisis suits that have been a bit lackluster. You know, AP1, strength 7. Well, now they can become AP2. And if I have two units combining this, that's a lot of shots that I'm getting. It's like mini cyclic iron blasters plus the extra AP. So I'm really looking forward to actually using missile pods on my crisis suits now. Having maybe different flavour of the crisis suits, like the different, um, the, the Sunforge and the Star Scythe and all this kind of stuff. It's, it, it's just allowing us to actually play these units in a different way. So I honestly can't see why people are complaining. I understand that maybe you've glued your guns on the crisis suits, or maybe you've spent a long while building them up and, and you enjoy playing, you know, different guns. Then if that's the case, play Legends. You know, play casually. It's not a problem with that. But in tournaments, the crisis suits are going to be adjusted to a relevant points cost to what they're armed with. Of course they are. And obviously from the leaks, if you see the points, they're actually pointed too cheap in my opinion. So, we don't need to worry about the crisis suits, because we've clearly got some flavour. We've got stratagems to help us out. If you take Commander Farsight, he can do a stratagem for free, battle tactic, even if it's already been used, and it costs zero CP. So a lot of the Montcar ones are battle tactic. The pinpoint counter offensive. The aggressive mobility and the focus fire is probably the two that you're definitely going to be looking at using with Farsight. And then you've got counter fire defense systems. 2 CP, okay, it's situational, but you can subtract 1 from the damage characteristic of that attack in the opponent's shooting phase. Yes, please. So they're going to hit you with damage 2s. Alright, it's a war gear stratagem, so I can't do it for free. But I could suddenly have my crash suits with minus one damage. And if I'm taking the Sunforge ones that have a four up in bun, then minus one damage, four up in bun. Cool. And then the Pulse Onslaught. Again, a two CP stratagem, so it's not cheap. One Tau Empire Infantry unit, excluding crew. And one enemy unit, as long as it's not a monster or a vehicle. Hit by one or more of those attacks. Until the end of the opponent's next turn, that enemy unit is shaken. While it is shaken, subtract 2 from its movement characteristic and subtract 2 from its advance and charge rolls. That's great. Slow them down. That unit that they could advance and charge and suddenly can be in your lines can no longer... Well, it's going to be 6 inches shorter range now. So, look. I'm really loving the direction in which they're taking the detachments. And then we come on to one of the most talked about detachments is the retaliation cadre. <coughs> So bonded heroes, each time a Tau Empire battle suit model from your army makes a ranged attack that targets a unit within 12 inches, improve the strength characteristic of that attack by 1. If the attack targets a unit within 6 inches, improve the armor penetration characteristic of that attack by 1 as well. Okay, so if you love your crisis suits, this is a really good detachment. All of the strength of your guns, if you get within 12, are going up by 1. Missile pods, 7 to 8. Burst cannons, strength 5 to strength 6. Missile pods, AP1, if you get within 6, AP2. Burst cannons become basically AP1, strength 6. And then you've got the pure tide and gram neurochips, the enhancements. Once per turn, you can, select, can target the bearer's unit with a stratagem, even if you've already targeted a different unit with that stratagem this phase. Wow. So, combinations of Farsight and this guy, you can suddenly start to use multiple stratagems as long as you've saved your CP. And obviously that they are, with Farsight, the battle tactic for free. And then we're same with this one. But we've got 
maybe a few less battle tactic ones in this detachment. Memory serves me correct. Bear in mind I am still getting used to all this information right now. But then you've got this one, my favourite, the Star Flare Ignition System. Tau Empire Battlesuit model only. At the end of the opponent's turn, if the bearer's unit is not within engagement range or one or more enemy units, you can remove that unit from the battlefield and place it into strategic reserves. So, what I thought about with this one is that, alright, well, missile pods I want to try, and I can do the uppy downy thing. So, if I just arm them with missile pods, so I have my enforcer commander, let's say, with this enhancement, I give him four missile pods. And then my crisis team just have the dual missile pods rather than the plasma and the missile pod. And then I've got two, four, six missile pod shots plus the four from the, sorry, the eight from the commander. Right. Nice. And I'm just shooting and then going up in reserve and back down again and being able to move around the board. So I've got this little unit that can actually just deliver firepower across the board and keep going up and down into deep strike because I can go into strategic reserves and then I can come down via deep strike and then you've got the internal grenade racks fancy giving the crisis suits grenades keyword absolutely each time the bearer ends a normal move you can select one enemy unit that is moved over during that move if you do roll 66 for each four plus the enemy suffers one mortal wound and then you can do the grenade stratagem and then you can fire and fade over them and do it again. So you could potentially do it three times. <laughs> Instant mortal wounds. An average of nine. So if you moved over in your movement phase, yeah, you do the grenade stratagem on top of doing it for free with this ability. So the first time you do it, you roll six dice, you get three mortal wounds on average. Then you spend the grenade stratagem, do it again, three mortal wounds. And then when you fire and fade, you move over it and back over it. And then, doom, boom, another three. So that's an average of nine mortal wounds. Yes, please. And then the prototype weapon, weapon system. Tau Empire Battlesuit model. Each time the bearer is selected to shoot, either the you choose lethal or sustained, hits one ability. Until those attacks are resolved, ranged weapons equipped by the bearer have that selected ability. Nice. So you want extra shots, or you're dealing with something a little bit tanky and you just want to get those lethal hits through, Perfect. You've got two options here, and you can tailor it. And the good thing about this detachment is that you can tailor your bonded heroes to meet whatever need you have versus your opponent. So if you have three separate commanders with internal grenade racks, star flare ignition system, and then the pure tide ingram chip, you can actually put them in your different crisis suit units depending on what you're going against. Do you want your fusions to go uppy downy, uppy downy? Brilliant. Put your enforcer in there. Or do you want the missile pod unit to be the one going up and down? And then just use your um, fusion unit, the uh, Sunforge one, for something else that I'm going to get into now. So the stratagems. Let's go straight in. The Torch Star Gambit. One Tau Battle Empire unit that can fly, whose attacks have been resolved this phase. You can basically, it's fire and fade, basically. The Torch Star Gambit is a fire and fade. I read that in a really weird way, so my apologies. One Tau Empire battle unit from your army that can fly, whose attacks have already been resolved this phase. If your unit is not within engagement range or one of my enemy units, it can make a normal move. Brilliant. Combined with then the Shortened Blade, which is a three inch deep strike for crisis suits. I mean, how can you be angry at having that? That is. <laughs> Busted, having crisis suits with fusions just drop in within three. One Tau Empire Battlesuit unit from your army that is arriving using the deep strike ability this phase. Your unit can be set up anywhere on the battlefield that is more than three inches away horizontally, away from any or from all enemy models. Then you can't declare a charge, but then if you'd saved yourself, you know, the three CP, you do that, and then you do the Torch Star Gambit. So you drop in three, you shoot them in the face. You bugger off. Or you do it to get capture on the outpost or whatever it may be. Honestly, guys, that combination is brutal. You've got stim injectors, which is as before. You've got the grab inhibitor field, which you can basically just, if something's charging in mass, you roll a d6 for each model in that unit. And then for each six that you roll, you suffer a mortal wound. Can be a couple of cheeky mortal wounds here or there, but you're probably not relying on that. 
the Shasso Arrowcon, which they annoying me, they spell Arrowcon wrong, um, if you know your lore. If um, a unit has 6 or more models, you get sustain hits 1. If it has 11 or more models, you get sustain hits 2. 1 CP. Battle tactic. Auto blowing up. Failsafe detonator. 2 CP, a little bit pricey. But that Riptide that does D6 mortal wounds, you just choose it to be a 1 or a 6. So you can either choose not to explode or choose to go boom. So if you throw that forward and then it does D6 more wounds, and if it doesn't have Deadly Demise, you will basically then um, do D3 mortal wounds, so a Crisis Suit doesn't have Deadly Demise, but it, it would if you used this stratagem, but you're probably using it on some of your big stuff. So look, the last one, and I love this one, the Kroot Hunting Pack. Get in some goddamn love for our Kroot, and trust me, these chickens are angry. And I cannot wait to show off a few things that I've noticed with this. So, each time a crew model from your army makes an attack, add one to the hit roll if the target of that attack is below starting strength. And add one to the wound roll as well if that target of the attack is below half strength. Crew model skirmish fighters from your army have a 6 plus invulnerable save against melee and 5 plus invulnerable save against ranged attacks. Cool. So, giving plus one to hit on your crew to hit all... Pretty much most of the game, all you have to do is kill a model. That's brilliant. The add one to the wound roll all depends on you know what damage you're putting in, and if you're being quite clever with how you're splitting your shots and things like that, you can really make use out of that. If you lower them down to half and then go in with plus one to wound as well, then we're cooking. The five plus invulnerable save with our, with with stealth and just having a five up and run against ranged again, really good for crew. The Crute Hawk Flock is basically just giving uh, a Crute model um, ignores cover, and more importantly, nothing can be set up within 12, so it's like Dark Strider's ability. The Nomadic Hunter, the Crute Trail Shaper only. While the bearer is leading a unit, add three to the move characteristic models in that unit, and ranged weapons equipped by the model have the assault ability. So Farstalkers are really going to like that, because you've got these two hounds, you've got the Kill Broken on a 32 mil, and then the other ones are on a 28 mil. So with them now going from movement 7 to movement 10, and the Hounds going from movement 12 to movement 15, you can really kind of spread this unit out. And if you're looking to make some good charges, then you've got that extra movement as well to help you. And more importantly, the Assault, so you can advance and do actions. Precision, Devastating Wounds with the Root Carb Weapons for the Crew War Shaper only. And then the Borth Rod Gland, uh, while the Bearer is leading a unit. You get crits on five pluses. A modified hit roll of a five plus scores a critical hit. So I'm going to jump into a couple of my combos that I've been figuring out, which actually has really excited me. And you'll see the crew memes uh, on the internet uh, floating around, or you will shortly. So you can basically, I'm going to talk about the trap well laid. So your war shaper, which is one of the shapers available to you gives you basically the captain's ability just I'm gonna use a battle tactic for free so a trap well laid for one CP the join the hunt which is a re you get to regen your unit back for two CP is free because it's a battle tactic so let's talk about this one it says here one crew unit from your army that has not been selected to shoot or fight this phase after your unit has resolved its attacks, this phase, select one enemy unit that was hit by one or more of those attacks until the end of the phase, each time a crew model from your army makes an attack that targets that enemy unit, unless that attacking unit is battle shot, improve the armor penetration characteristic of that attack by one. So, I'm going to get straight into the combo. You charge something in, something else, like a crew hound unit, or a crew tox, or a rampager, done, it hits. You then spend this stratagem, okay, and then your crew will be AP1. Now, if you're attacking unit that's below half strength, you're going to get plus one to hit, so the crew are going to be hit on twos. And then let's just assume that you've shot it with the Lone Spear Rider. That gives the crew full rerolls to hit, even in melee as well, so it's just attacks. So this crew unit is going to be doing 20 attacks. Sorry, 40 attacks. It's got a Crute War Shaper in there and it's got the Flesh Terror Shaper in there, which got the enhancement to give them crit hits on critical hits on five pluses. 
and sustain hits one. So they'll be basically doing 40 attacks, hitting on twos, which you'll just reroll everything that's not a five or a six for the critical hits to get the um, sustained. So you'll work out, I think roughly, you'll probably get about 52, 53 attacks go through and your strength four, but if you're if they're below half strength as well, then you'd be plus one to wound. So if you're not plus one to wound, you're still gonna be wounding with half of them if you're going into Marines. And then that's 13 wounds that will go, 13 to 14 wounds will go through from 26 to 27 wounds. So then, yeah, you go, well, I've killed that unit, and because I got a flesh terror in unit, that unit's now got a five plus feel no pain. That's just one of the combinations that you can do with your Crute Shapers, because two Crute Shapers can go in a unit of 20 Crute, because it says that in the asterisks. Um, and then the other stratagems, the Grizzly Feast, okay? So once they've killed something, you could spend that stratagem, and then in your opponent's next command phase, each enemy unit within six of that unit must take a Battle Shock test. And if that unit taking the Battle, battle Shock test is below half strength, subtract one from that test. So if you st stringed out this big unit, 20 group, you could literally make loads of units take battle shot tests. That's funny. Join the hunt. Should your crew unit die for whatever reason, 2 CP comes back. Just like the guard strap. Well, that's just cool, isn't it? <laughs> and this stratagem cannot be used to return destroyed character units to attached units. Fine. I get this unit. It regens. It's back constant never-ending like horde of just crew and if two of your crew units died so a normal standard 20 man and the one with the war shaper you could spend the stratagem on them and then spend the stratagem for free on the crew shaper so basically that's 40 crew coming back and the other thing you can do is if for example you threw the crew to go and die and the opponent was like i got some flamers i'm gonna overwatch they kill the crew then they've overwatched them in your movement phase so then they just come back in the reinforcement step. So the crew are going to be so funny to play and so busted when you think about a lot of these hidden little combinations that you can do. The one that I like is the hidden hunters. So basically it gives loan ops to the recruit unit. So your recruit unit goes, hi, I'm here. Um, no, I'm not. Oh, let's say an enemy wants to come and fish you off an objective. You've got your crew around the... Um, the objective and you're going right okay cool and you've made the objective sticky because that's what crew carnivores have they have field craft which makes um, sticky objectives so you have your uh, unit there but you've put a trail shaper in so a trail shaper has an ability called ones per uh, once per round you can do a reactive move so all you do is you can go oh they got within nine of me see ya oh now you're outside of 12 loan up oh and that objective that you were relying on getting onto because you wanted to charge me you can't. <laughs> so basically, and it's still mine because I'm sticky. So, 1 CP. So, Kroot can be a really good army in the hands of a tactical general. The one that wants to just basically go, well, if you assume that the crew are similar points, let's just for the sake of this say that they are what they are now. So, 55 points for 10, 110 for 20. I think they'll be a bit more than that. Um, like, go up to like similar to scouts, maybe like 65 points um, a unit of 10 and 130 for um, a unit of 20. That's just me speculating. But if we assume that the points are what they are now, you could take 60, you could take 60 crew for 660 points. In a thousand points, you could pretty much get loads of shapers, loads of crew, some rampages. It's insane. It's good. I think crew are going to be a horde army, and maybe that's not your thing, and that's absolutely fine. But if you're like me and you've got 250 goddamn crew, and you want to try something new, I'm definitely going to enjoy playing this. I didn't get into Tau for crew, but I do love the Farstalker models, and I do love how they're going to complement your Tau army. And in this detachment, you could definitely have some fun being those guerrilla warriors, you know, laying traps and just being annoying. And I can't wait for that kind of level of play. So, look, I know I've gone through the um, the stratagems and the detachments. Um, I'm not gonna go into anything else because I think that you've all seen it by now and you all have mixed views. 
But if you are wanting to join a positive community and get away from some of the internet hate that's happening right now and you're just sick and tired of arguing against the same person and tit for tat and I think this and you think that, I think you're wrong, blah, 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 blah. Come and join the Discord because I tell you what, all of us in our Discord are making memes, having a laugh. We had like a, in the Patreon side of things, we had like a six or seven hour uh, call that started talking about suits and then the battle suit detachment, the retaliation cadre, Montcar, Kion, and then it just descended into some <laughs> humorous crude conversation. And then we started to look at the different combinations and we're all massively in love with them now. We think, oh my God, actually, <laughs> this could be really powerful. And then we're looking at different combinations of what we can do when we do get the full picture, the points. Maybe there are some other things that haven't been shown in this. We don't know. Um, I, so I, for one, really want you just to kind of understand that at the moment, there's going to be a lot of internet salt, if you will, uh, a lot of people expressing their concerns, and it's not a problem. You have a right to express your concerns, but not at the expense of others. And I'm not saying to you, come into my Discord and vent. Like, I'm saying come in and actually just talk about the faction that you love. And if you do have concerns, talk about it. Don't whinge about it. Talk about it. And honestly, I've been really impressed with everyone in my Discord. And I'd just like to give a shout out to everyone who's a part of it. Patreons, no Patreons, just here for the free community. Not a problem. You've all conducted yourself in such a professional way and also made it enjoyable for everybody as part of it. So I can't thank you enough, you legends. Keep going with that positive behavior. And I think we all can take a leaf out of book, uh, leaf out of people's book here and actually be positive about what's going on and get excited. I know I am, I know my Discord is, and I'd love for you to come and join and take part in that excitement. One last thing guys, just wanted to add that I wanted to just show you some of the activity that's going on in the Discord currently. So if you join by the link below, you will have a free community access so you can join the Shasui section and that will give you any announcements. We've got the Shasui general chat, which is obviously right now people are talking about the 20 crew blob plus a war shaper. We're talking about different combos. People are really kind of expressing themselves in terms of what they're looking forward to. And or, or, it's just a positive place and, and it's People saying like that's what they're hoping for. Um, strike teams discussing about different combinations of characters. Something about toilet dice. <laughs> so, um, I and then you've got the list discussion, which is a bit weird, obviously, because people are trying to like already theory craft and think about what they could do. And obviously, we don't have the proper points yet because they'll be updated with um, the manufactorum thing that comes out, the the field manual. Sorry. And um, people are already starting to think, what kind of units can I use in certain ways and combinations, which is really good to see. Um, we have a really funny meme channel going on at the moment. And uh, yes, they seem to be um, putting me in memes with Crute. And uh, I do love it, to be honest with you, because I am loving my, my Crute combinations at the moment. Um, and <laughs> again, I just think it's really, really good. This one does pay me um, about Long Strike. Long Strike. Thank you for your service. You got me my golden ticket to Atlanta. I'll be taking you to the Manchester Super Major event. We'll have an absolute blast and give you a full send-off. If it is true that you've gone, you will be sorely missed. So, and then over in the Patreon side of things, we've got the Pathfinders, which is the purple dots, the blue for Shaspray and the green for Chassel. We've got plenty of discussions going on. We're starting to kind of have calls together on a regular and answering any kind of concerns people have. People are in a productive way discussing what they're concerned about but not in a negative way and more thinking like well how is this going to work i am used to this style of play and and we're kind of coming together and thinking what have you thought about this and a lot of the initial reactions that was more of a concern is now turned into excitement and a lot of people like i said are already excited and this is the discord to be part of if you want positivity a great place to chat to like-minded people whilst also celebrating the faction that we've chosen. It's a great place to be. List building and things like that, we're theorying at the moment. We're obviously not doing anything concrete because we don't have the points. But honestly, this Discord is popping. And for my members already, thank you so much for being perfect advocates of everything that I love about this hobby. And if you want to join, there will be a link below and the link also gives you options to sign up to the Patreon side of things. There's still a 10% discount if you put Infiltrate 10 in the promo code and apply it when you check out. 
so that's still valid until the end of March. And honestly, guys, for me, just come and join in. You've got nothing to lose and everything to gain. Speaking of which, this content will not just end here because on Sunday, this coming Sunday, so that's Sunday the 17th, I will be doing a tier list video with Richard Siegler on the art of war. And then also, Richard Siegler is going to come onto my channel and we're going to do a bit of a community engagement piece where we're going to be talking about something slightly different than a tier list. We're going to be talking about things like how can Tau players prepare for change, what we should be excited about, and we're going to have a bit more of a discussion around some of our thoughts and feelings and trying to inspire and motivate others to think differently and get excited. We're going to try and help get rid of this grey cloud that's currently over the Tau community and all the Facebooks and the Reddits. It's just negativity everywhere and we've banded together and gone, you know what, let's do something about this. As community leaders and well, chassos of a highest order in this faction, we want to do our part and it's going to be fantastic. So make sure you stay tuned and look out for these important videos. So without further ado, enjoy whatever you're doing, get excited and come and join us on both the Art of War and the Pure Tide program channels for all that Tau goodness. So I bid you adieu, chassos, stay safe, stay positive and let's go and get ready for the Codex release.